Welcome to the lecture on Hypothesis of Association. In the previous lectures, we discussed about t-test, z-test, where we tested hypothesis of difference. In those lectures, we compare one mean against another mean. So always we compared whether there is a significant difference. But in this lecture, I am going to discuss about the association. Example, we are interested in whether there is a significant association between uh, fasting blood sugar or blood glucose level versus serum total cholesterol level. How to do that? Assume that we have oh, about n number of individuals. So 1, 2, 3, 4, so, so like that, n number of individuals and they are fasting blood sugar values x1, x2, x3, x4 till n. Also the total cholesterol level which is y1, y2, y3, y4 like that hope you are clear about the fasting blood sugar level and total cholesterol level now we are not interested whether there is a significant difference but we are interested in whether when the fasting blood sugar is increasing whether total cholesterol also increasing so that is our interest what can we do is easily we can plot a graph which has x-axis and y-axis in the x-axis we can plot the fasting blood sugar level and the y-axis, we can plot the total cholesterol level. If we get something like this, you will not get straight lines. So, you always you will get something like this. If we get something like this, you can think that there is some kind of positive association is there. You can draw, if you can recall your small age mathematics, you can find out the best fitted line. So, the best fitted line will be something like this. Based on this, you can conclude that when you have higher fasting blood sugar level, the cholesterol level also will be high. Now, the question is how to measure this quantitatively? If you can remember our lecture topic, that is correlation coefficient. Here, we are going to talk about correlation coefficient. So, the correlation coefficient is the measure to describe the association between two variables. If the correlation is something like this, we call that positive correlation. If the correlation is something like this, when you reduce the x variable, y also it's going down. So, this kind of correlation, we name that as negative correlation. If you can't get fitted lines, so if, if the values are something like this, you can't have a positive axis, positive line or negative line. So, you can't draw a line. So, there's, we call that no correlation. Now, think if in a positive correlation, ideally you need to get the line like this. So, this is the best fitted line. The best fitted line comes through the plots between the values of x axis and y axis. If you get the value something like that, no other values, you can straightly draw a fitted line without any problem. This is the best fitted line that you can have. So the maximum value in this circumstance is plus 1. So maximum positive correlation that you can have is plus 1. If the line is something like this, but you got this based on these values, the correlation is still positive. So, the correlation is more than 0, but it is less than 1. In such circumstance, the correlation will be between 0 and plus 1. So, now remember, so this is a perfect correlation where the value is plus 1. Here it is again perfect correlation but it is less than plus 1. So, you there are methods to calculate the correlation. So, it will be more closer to 1. But here again it is more than 0 but the pattern is not perfect like this. So, again this will be more than 0 but it is for far less than 1. So, same thing applies to the negative correlation as well. When you have something like this, we will call this as perfect negative correlation where the correlation value is minus 1. So, this minus value we call the correlation value because of that we name this as R value. So, R value is minus 1. 
if it is something like this, there's no specific pattern, but you can hardly draw a line with the negative correlation. Again, the R value will be less than 0, but it will be more than minus 1. This is not a perfect negative correlation, but still it is negative correlation. If there is no correlation, so there is no line, so the R will be 0. Now you need to understand very important thing, that is, R varies from minus 1 to plus 1. In some textbooks, you will see that it's like 0.8 to 1 is perfect correlation, 0.6 to 0.79 is moderate correlation, something like that. So weak correlation and very weak correlation, something like that. But I don't like to follow this one. But why is that? The most important thing is not the R value, but the P value. Here I am not going to discuss how to calculate the R value because nowadays we have many statistical softwares. So you can easily calculate the R value and get the respective P value. So in general procedure is, we have two variables, which is X and Y. We have the X list and Y list. The next step is we plot this one and we see what is the pattern. We name this diagram as scatter diagram. Using statistical softwares, you can get the R value. So R value will be either closer to 0 or closer to plus 1 or closer to minus 1. Based on that, you can come into conclusion that whether there's a positive correlation, whether there's a no correlation, whether there's a negative correlation. But the most important thing, rather than discussing very weak confident correlation or moderate correlation, weak correlation, we are interested in the p-value. You can calculate the respective p-value. Again, p-value comes from a sampling distribution like this. I'm not going to discuss the sampling theory in the correlation coefficient. So you plot the rejection region, assume that it is 5% rejection region. So if it is z-distribution, so these values will be 1.96 and 1.96. When the r-value is something like that, if the respective p-value Based on the respective p-value, based on the sampling distribution, we come into conclusion. How do we do that? Assume that is 5% 5, 5 rejection region. If the p-value is less than 0 0.05, in 5% rejection region, we are going to reject the null hypothesis. The location is what is null hypothesis? The null hypothesis here is there is no statistical significance association no association so alternative hypothesis is there is association no association is plus so here if the p-value is less than 0 0.05 we reject the null hypothesis and we come into conclusion that there is statistical significant association between two variables if the p-value is more than 0 0.05 when we are interested in 5% rejection region we can't Reject the null hypothesis so we can come into conclusion that there is no statistical significant association. If your R value is still 0.1, if your R value is 0.1, you might think that there is no significant correlation. It's very weak. It will be something very scattered diagram. So you hardly draw the best fitted line. But if still the p value is significant, if the p is significant, there's no harm even though with the very less correlation, this very less correlation is statistically significant because we are interested in the p value. If you can't remember p value, please go and watch my video. I hope you are clear about how to find out the correlation between the variables using correlation coefficient. Thank you very much.